Hey, hey, it's your girl Andrea, and we're going to talk about genetics today, and you're probably wondering why, but there's actually some newer technology that's not really well known out there um, that you can do EPD testing on commercial cows, no matter if they're not purebred or not. So, we tested the herd, and I'm going to tell you why, I'm going to show you the process, all the goods within this video, so follow along for more. We officially have breed compositions for you, Miss Lady, and all of the cows in the herd. In addition to EPDs on anybody that is at least a lower percentage dairy. So unfortunately I did not get EPDs on her since she is 50% dairy, but we did on pretty much everyone else. So so we tested every single one of our home OG cows. So if you've been following along for a while, we expanded our herd. We tripled the herd in the last year. So with that, we bought some shorter term cows. We don't know anything about them really besides the fact that they were bred and they were due this time frame and they were black cows. So my goal is to breed and raise replacement heifers to bring our own genetics back into the herd because I love some of our cows. They do really well for us. We know their history, things like that. We've you know had their DMs. I've seen their offspring thrive, all of that good stuff. So I wanted to, to test the entire herd and that's what we did. So with the genomic testing that I did, it is called Inherit Select. That's the one that works for crossbreeds across the main beef breeds with just a touch of dairy in there. It works as well. I think the limit is 20% um, dairy and then you can get actual EPDs, but you can do a breed composition on anything within that. Um, so I do have Moonlight's like breed composition. I just don't have EPDs on her since she is too high a percentage of dairy. But I got EPDs for pretty much everyone else in the herd. We're going to walk through that, um, show you some ways we're going to implement that on our operation and how it's going to benefit us. Good morning. We are having a busy morning. We are finishing feeding in the barn. Dad's headed that way. We also have cows locked in, so there are no cows out on the cornfield. Um, heifers are in the first pen. Second pen over there is our home cows, home race cows. Ones are out there. Um, we are be doing some DNA sampling, tissue sampling on our cows and heifers today. So I'm going to take you along for all of that, um, talk about the why, and have a grand old time doing it. So without further ado, here comes the fun. So I want to show you what the applicator looks like. It's just like a regular tagger. You insert the piece, so I have one in there right now. And this is what they look like before you put them on, and then you load them and the red piece comes off, and I'll show you. But um, it's a tiny little thing, and you have your little number on it. And you have to take records. And then you submit all the information online and mail it. It's gonna be a good time. are back in their pen and anybody that we sorted off all of the heifers also got new tags for calving so instead of the tags that match their dam they now have their own tag and we associate it with their number so now i have all of our samples in a bag and i have all of this written down so i have my numbers of the two matching the numbers of the tags and then you have to go online and log into a little portal um, create an account and enter all of the data uh, just the matching numbers, and then it'll print out a slip to mail it, and then you get your results in four to six weeks. So three to six, but usually averaging about four. So I will, uh, yeah, keep you posted on that. But it was a really easy process. It just added probably 30 seconds to every single one. 
um, not anything crazy, but it was just simple and easy peasy. The example here, Miss 801, where we bought back in 2018. So she's been here. This is her fifth calf with us, I think, if I'm doing the math right. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yes, I did the math right. Fifth calf this year. She has done incredibly well for us. The cool part about getting EPDs on these cows is essentially you're not going in blind, making decisions on replacement heifers, breeding decisions, all of that stuff. Because you see, you know, the external. You see that she is in good condition. You see she's a very docile animal. Her calves do well in the feedlot. Um, She's always been a good mom. She's got a great udder. We see that on the outside, but really we don't know what her genetics are like on the inside. So now that we have the EBDs for her, we can actually make breeding decisions going into this next year with AIing that could, you know, fix certain traits, complement certain traits, things like that. And also know like, hey, is she a good cow to keep replacement heifers out of based on her EBDs of what we're looking for in our operation. So with Inherit Select, you are getting the maternal EPDs, so you know, the foot composition, udder placement, all of that stuff, milk. You're also gonna get the carcass EPD traits for the, like, the terminal traits. So your ribeye area, tenderness scores, feed to gain, all of that good stuff. Um, you're getting both of those things. And then it also combines them into individual like total merit EPDs as well as like a total dollar based EPD. So essentially it's gonna tell you which cows are making you more money and which cows are costing you money. So it's been really fun to put <laughs> moonlight streaming you can't tell <laughs> it's really fun to put two and two together to look at certain cows and be like i really don't love her and you know maybe she has great epds and maybe she doesn't there's been a few that are like definitely on our call list now i'm gonna walk you through that um i have it in my pocket since there's quite a few of them um it's all digital but i printed it out to make it easy so we'll walk through i'll show you some cows um, talk about replacement heifers and go from there. First example is 806, this lovely lady right here. Um, she did have a heifer this year. So it is a good opportunity for us to look at her EPDs. Um, and I'll put them on the screen too. So overall, she is well above average for our herd. And she's higher up in there. And the nice part is if you log in, it'll tell you how she ranks in comparison to other cows in the entire system. So I will put all this data on the screen. But she's a great one that we could keep a replacement heifer out of because her maternal APDs are very good as well as the terminal carcass traits. So she'd be a good one to keep the replacement out of and also have calves um, in the feedlot or as potential replacements down the road. All right, 409, show them yourself. This cow is honestly a pain in the rear. She's naughty, she picks on her cows. She's not mean, she just is pushy and picks on cows and it's just really not been a great performer for her. So. So when we get her EPDs, I'll put them on the screen as well. Um, she is very much below average. So being she's getting older, being she's never really done great things, there's her calf. Um, if she were to have issues down the road, if her confirmation goes even worse than what it could be right now, it's not terrible. Um, she's not a cow that's making us a lot of money in a year. She's probably actually costing us a little bit knowing her EPDs, which Genetics is only 40% of the equation, but she is someone that could be on the call list um, and likely won't be here for a long term. And we will not keep replacements out of her knowing what is on her EPD numbers. We have Red. We have her EPDs. She's very much average. Um, she is a great mom, so we have that going for her. So, you know, only 40% of the equation we figured out, but we did get a breed composition for her. So she's a really fun one where we were like, what is she? Because <laughs> she's kind of unique. She does that weird tongue thing all the time. She's red, obviously. She's got some like crazy googly eyes. Um, so I will put her breed composition up on the screen. She's honestly just a hodgepodge of everything. So that was really fun. I think that we are going to keep since this is a heifer and she's been so docile and sweet. And knowing Red's EPD is that she is at least average in her herd and that she was bred to a bull that will complement that, we will probably keep this little lady as long as she grows well. Hello, Miss Seven Simi. Um, so these are ones that actually uh, showed up on a feedlot truck. I connected with the guy who had them. They're really great genetics. I actually registered some We ended up keeping them, breeding them, and then we did get um, genetic testing done on them as well. And she is one of our top ones in the entire herd. So obviously keeping her was a really great decision. She has phenomenal EPDs on both the maternal characteristics as well as the carcass traits. So really excited to have her in the herd. She had a bull calf this year and he's already banded, but we will likely have her on the list to keep replacements out of, just knowing her APDs. Um, the only fault that she has is that she's supposed to be a high dry matter intake animal, meaning she's gonna eat more feed than the average. So 
Outside of that, she's got phenomenal APDs, another option that we will 100% like to keep replacements out of. So really, this is just going to help you make decisions without feeling blind doing them. You know, if you have a cow that loses a calf and it's not her fault and it's two months later and it's just a random fluke deal, you know, is it worth keeping her? Is it not worth keeping her? Depending on the markets and your situation, obviously, it's expensive. But, you know, if she's one of your top five cows, you might be a little more likely to keep her knowing you could get a, you know, replacement heifer out of her or utilizing, um, like, sect semen, things like that in certain cows that do have really great DPDs and you want to replace, raise replacements of things like that. So it just gives you that extra, hey, this is a great idea. Or, you know, when we used to put replacements, which actually these girls behind me, we didn't have genomic information on them before we picked them out. So we're kind of going in blind of her mom's nice. <laughs> she does well. The heifer herself grew well. You know, we didn't have issues with her. She's put together nicely, confirmation-based, and just knowing a little bit of mom's history. But now we have EPDs on all of their mothers, and we're actually going to test all of them as well. So it's just that extra knowledge piece that really just gives you that confidence going into your decisions on your operation, which is a critical thing in today's world. Would you like to tell them? Hey. You're supposed to have superb EPDs for how tame you are, but she does not. So knowing that going into it, yes, she's a great cow. Our calves do really well in the feedlot, which means our cross with our bulls is doing well for that. Um, but we'll likely not keep replacements out of her just because there's nothing special there, you know? Unless you have a really great calf, I'm not going to go out of my way to keep something out of her. The one in the back here with that blue tag and green tag, she was a very small calf at birth. But now I know that her mom carries a low birth weight genetics, and she's also my top cow out of my own hut own cattle so i'm very glad i kept her as a replacement and i also have a sibling from the year prior in here as well which is really great be like a niece to her also a heifer we'll probably keep her since cbds keep going um and her mom is in here and i have <laughs> her mom's in here her sister's in here so that's just a great line that i can keep replacements out of because there's really good epds on both sides of maternal and carcass traits okay this is the mother, that is a daughter, another daughter over there, granddaughter of hers, also one I will keep. So great EPDs, they're a smaller framed cow, which is actually pretty nice. They have a lower dry matter intake EPD, which means they eat a little less. So great ones to keep replacements out of and feed back into the feedlot. I could show you more and more of animals. So let me know if that's something you want and I can give you like the numbers and the data and stuff um, of individual animals, but it just goes to show that genetics is only part of the picture because we can have some phenomenal cows that you think are incredible and you're like, yeah, keep replacements. And then you see their EPDs and you're like, you know, you kind of got to weigh those things, but everyone can utilize this in their own way. Obviously it just helps you have that confidence. Like I've mentioned and over and over again in this video to go into management practices, breeding decisions, who you're going to keep as replacement, who's on the coal list, um, all that good stuff. Because since we, have both a feedlot aspect and for building the herd back, I'm gonna utilize both parts of the EPD. So the maternal as well as the carcass traits and try to keep everything kind of as well-rounded as it can be. So from there, you can pick, you can pick certain traits that, really? You can pick certain traits that you want to focus on to enhance, to improve. So for example, our birth weight EPDs on our cows are for the most part incredibly high which is not a surprise for us. Um, we know that our cows are going to usually produce big calves. We average 95 pounds. So that was kind of like a red flag in the system. But for us, we know that. It's just kind of cool that it was confirmed by genetics that, yeah, it's not just environmental that these calves are big when they're born. It's also in the genetics. So things we can work on, things we can improve. It just also helps making decisions of whether you're AIing or you're buying new bulls, what traits you need to improve versus just guessing, knowing your herd gives you that confidence. But Check out the description for more information on doing the genetic testing on your own herd. Like I said, it's available for commercial cows as well as registered ones if you want to, but all the information is all below and I will give you more information as you things go because I'm going to use this. I'm going to test more calves this fall, get an idea before we choose replacement heifers and that way we're not going in blind. Um, test a couple of the botten cows that we think are really nice just to see what they, how they kind of sit. But if you have questions, make sure you drop them below. Make sure you check out the description for the links to check it all out. <laughs> She's telling you to do that. <laughs> Until next time, we'll see you then. Make sure you drop any questions below and hopefully you hang around more often and watch more videos.